by the river, spreading ruin and scattering bands, splashing and paddling with hoofs of a goat, and breaking the golden lilies afloat with a dragonfly on the river. He tore out a reed, the great god Pan, from the deep, cool bed of the river. The limpid water turbidly ran, and the broken lilies a dying lay, and the dragonfly had fled away ere he brought it out of the river. High on the shore sat the great god Pan, while turbidly flowed the river and hacked and hewed as a great god can, with his hard bleak steel at the patient reed, till there was not a sign of a leaf indeed to prove it fresh from the river. He cut it short, did the great god pen, how tall it stood in the river. Then drew the pith, like the heart of a man, steadily from the outside ring, and notched the poor dry empty thing in holes as he sat by the river. This is the way, laughed the great god pen, laughed while he sat by the river, the only way since gods began to make sweet music they could succeed. Then, dropping his mouth to a hole in the reed, he blew in power by the river. Sweet, 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 oh pen, piercing sweet by the river, blinding sweet, oh great god pen, the sun on the hill forgot to die. And the lilies revived, and the dragonfly came back to dream on the river. Yet half a beast is the great god Pan, to laugh as he sits by the river, making a poet out of a man. The true gods sigh for the cost and pain, for the reed which grows never more again, as a reed with the reed in the river. My little son, who looked from thoughtful eyes and moved and spoke in quiet grown-up wise, having my law the seventh time disobeyed, I struck him and dismissed with hard words and unkissed his mother, who was patient, being dead. Then, fearing lest his grief should hinder sleep, I visited his bed, but found him slumbering deep with darkened eyelids and their lashes yet from his late sobbing wet. And I, with moan, kissing away his tears, left others of my own. For on a table drawn beside his bed, he put within his reach a box of counters and a red-veined stone, a piece of glass abraded by the beach, and six or seven shells, a bottle with bluebells, and two French copper coins, ranged there with careful art to comfort his sad heart. So when that night I prayed to God, I wept and said, Ah, oh, when at last we lie with cranced breath, not vexing thee in death, and thou rememberest of what toys we made our joys, how weakly understood thy great commanded good, then, fatherly not less than I, whom thou hast moulded from the clay, thou leave thy wrath and say, I will be sorry for their childishness. Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin? May not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that in. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? Those who have gone before. Then must I knock or call when just in sight? They will not keep you standing at that door. Shall I find comfort, travel sore and weak? Of labor you shall find the sum. Will there be beds for me and all who seek? Yea, beds for all who come. <laughs> 